Season 1 of The Vampire Diaries introduces the siblings Elena and Jeremy Gilbert from the small town of Mystic Falls. They are both grieving the recent death of their parents in a car accident, which Elena was a part of, but mysteriously saved from the wreckage. The siblings now live with their young aunt, Jenna Summers, who is trying to get her own life together while suddenly responsible for two teenagers. As the pair return to high school for the start of the new year, Elena becomes immediately interested in the new student, Stefan Salvatore. This frustrates both Elena's quarterback ex-boyfriend Matt and her friend Caroline, who is also attracted to Stefan. Despite this typical high school drama, Elena's best friend Bonnie encourages her to pursue a relationship with Stefan. But what no one in Mystic Falls knows is that Stefan is secretly a vampire. Stefan wants to live a normal life like a regular high schooler and therefore refuses to feed on humans. But his estranged brother Damon revels in being a vampire, feeding on humans to gain more power. Stefan and Damon were born in the 1800s, and as humans they both fell in love with a vampire named Catherine Pierce. Their father was ashamed of his son's relationship, and led the townspeople to trap Catherine and the town's other vampires in an eternal tomb, before killing his sons. Stefan survived thanks to being turned into a vampire, and saved Damon by forcing him to turn into a vampire too. Seeing no use for living now that Catherine was gone, Damon professes an undying feud with Stefan for damning him to an eternal life without his true love. And now in the present, Stefan and Damon both become interested in Elena, due to her being an identical doppelganger and descendant of Catherine, while Damon remains determined to find a way to open Catherine's tomb. Meanwhile, Jeremy falls in love with Matt's sister Vicky, who breaks up with her jock boyfriend Tyler to be with him. When Damon feeds on Vicky and turns her into a vampire, Vicky can't control her bloodlust, forcing Stefan to kill her to save the unaware Jeremy. Jeremy then begins dating another vampire named Anna, and Jenna begins dating the new high school history teacher Alaric, who is secretly a vampire hunter, wanting to avenge his wife Isabel after she was murdered by Damon. Meanwhile, Bonnie discovers from her grandmother that she is in fact a witch. The duo use their magic to help open the town's tomb, but Damon is devastated to discover that Catherine was never actually locked inside, and due to overexertion, Bonnie's grandmother dies. As Elena and Stefan grow closer, Stefan reveals that he was the one who saved Elena from the crash that killed her parents. Stefan also reveals that after noticing Elena's resemblance to Catherine, he looked into her past and discovered that she was secretly adopted. Jenna helps Elena discover information about her birth parents, finding out that Elena's mother is actually Alaric's late wife, Isabel. Alaric then discovers that Isabel never actually died, but had instead become obsessed with vampires and convinced Damon to turn her into to one. Alaric attacks Damon, but is killed as a result. Fortunately, a Gilbert family ring given to Alaric by Isabel saves his life, as the wearer can't be killed by anything supernatural. Many of the tomb vampires, including a vampire named Frederick, want to enact revenge on the town for trapping them for over a century. Elena helps Stefan and Damon defeat Frederick, but Stefan is seriously injured in the process. Elena allows Stefan to drink her blood to heal himself, leading him to fall into a blood addiction. As Elena and Damon help Stefan kick his newfound addiction, they grow closer together and begin to develop romantic feelings for each other. Meanwhile, Elena and Jeremy's uncle John arrives in Mystic Falls though Elena soon learns that he is in fact her biological father. John is a member of the town's Founders Council, whose secret mission is to protect Mystic Falls from vampires. Isabel then comes to town working with John to kill all vampires to protect their daughter. In their grand scheme, John acquires an object known as the Gilbert Device, which can incapacitate all supernatural beings in the area. As the season comes to a close, the remaining tomb vampires plan on assaulting the town during a Founders Day celebration, where John and Isabel plan on using the Gilbert device to kill them all. After activating the device, every vampire in town is affected by its power, and mysteriously so are Tyler and his father, Mayor Lockwood. This causes Tyler to get into a car crash with his friends, the newly dating couple Matt and Caroline, leaving Caroline critically injured. John and Isabel round up all of the vampires, resulting in the death of Jeremy's girlfriend Anna and the non-vampire Mayor Lockwood. Alaric then arrives to help his former rival Damon fight back against his villainous ex-wife, 
life and save the vampires. In the end, Damon shares a kiss with Elena, who is secretly his long-lost love, Catherine. Catherine then stabs John, just as the real Elena arrives to discover the aftermath. I want to cut in real quick and tell you about this video sponsor, FlexiSpot. Whether you're working from home or in an office, it's time to evolve your furniture. FlexiSpot makes desks, chairs, recliners, sofas, and more, like you've never seen before. I just got an E7 standing desk that allows me to completely alter my workspace with the push of a button. I can sit down and relax in my office chair while editing a video, or I can effortlessly adjust the height and make it a standing desk, giving me the ability to move around and increase my blood flow. FlexiSpot desks are eco-friendly as they are made with 100% recyclable material. And they're super sturdy. The E7s can hold up to 355 pounds, and the E7 Pro Premium Standing Desk can hold up to 440 pounds. There's a reason they've been named the number one standing desk by Tech Radar two years in a row. There are so many benefits to using a standing desk, like lowering your risk for heart disease, reducing back pain from having to sit in a chair all day, and boosting your mood, energy, and productivity level. There's actually a big New Year's sale going on at FlexiSpot right now, and they provide all kinds of standing desks to meet your demands. If you want a premium standing desk for daily use, you can check out their E7 and E7 Pro C frame. Or if you're on a limited budget, you can choose their E5 model. And you guys can unlock even more savings by using my exclusive promo code in the description. Click the FlexiSpot link to enjoy some fantastic discounts all throughout January. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the recap. In Season 2 of The Vampire Diaries, Elena reaches her estranged father in time to save his life. Catherine confronts Damon, telling him she will always love Stefan more. When Damon turns to Elena for comfort, she confesses that she too will always love Stefan. To complicate the romances even further, Catherine announces her desire to have Stefan all to herself, and threatens Elena's life if Stefan doesn't break up with her. Meanwhile, Damon gives Caroline some of his blood to help her heal from her injury sustained in her car crash. Despite Damon, Catherine turns Caroline into a vampire. Stefan agrees to train Caroline in her new abilities and cravings, though she decides to break up with Matt to protect him from her new bloodlust. When Caroline's mother, Sheriff Forbes, discovers that her daughter is now a vampire, she disowns her. Catherine then warns Elena about Klaus an original vampire and also a hybrid werewolf, who wants to break a curse placed upon him by his stepfather centuries prior, which forced his werewolf abilities to remain dormant. Now Klaus wants to reach his full power and create a hybrid army. To break his curse, he would need to sacrifice a doppelganger, a vampire, and a werewolf. Centuries ago, Catherine turned herself into a vampire to avoid being used by Klaus as the required doppelganger sacrifice. But now he would be coming to Mystic Falls for Elena. Also arriving in town is Elijah, Klaus's half-brother and fellow original vampire, who wants to kill Klaus for murdering his werewolf-hating family. Elijah plans on letting Klaus sacrifice Elena to lift his curse, which would briefly make Klaus mortal, allowing Elijah to kill his half-brother. Elsewhere, Tyler's uncle Mason arrives in town to console him after his father's death. Tyler discovers that his uncle is a werewolf and that he too contains the werewolf curse, which will transform him after he makes his first kill. Mason is secretly working with Catherine, but unbeknownst to him, he is being set up as Klaus's needed vampire sacrifice. When Damon kills Mason, Catherine forces Tyler into committing his first kill, fully turning him into a werewolf. Tyler and Caroline bond over their newfound transformations and powers, and begin to develop romantic feelings for each other, but neither act on them due to their friendship with Matt. To escape his feelings, Tyler leaves town to train with Mason's werewolf friend Jules. As Elena and her allies search for a way to defeat Klaus, Elijah reveals that hybrids can only be killed by a witch, and that the death must occur during his transformation into a werewolf. The magical witch Bonnie begins searching for a spell she can use to defeat Klaus, and is aided in her investigation by Jeremy, leading to the two developing romantic feelings for each other. As Klaus attempts to complete his ritual, he captures Caroline and Tyler to use as his vampire and werewolf sacrifices. Damon rescues them, but Tyler, unable to control his newfound werewolf abilities, bites Damon. Klaus then turns Elena's Aunt Jenna into a vampire to use as a sacrifice, alongside Jules as the werewolf sacrifice. 
Bonnie tethers Elena's soul to her father John's, and Klaus then uses her as the final sacrifice needed in his ritual. Bonnie then casts the spell which would allow Klaus to be killed, but Elijah saves him after Klaus reveals he can bring Elijah to his not actually dead family. Bonnie's tethering spell brings Elena back to life, but John is killed as a result. In the aftermath, Elena and Alaric mourn the loss of Jenna. Klaus, now with his full werewolf abilities, reveals he tricked Elijah and in incapacitates him with a special dagger, the only tool powerful enough to defeat an original. Damon then discovers that he will soon die, as the bite he received from the werewolf Tyler is lethal to vampires. Klaus reveals that his hybrid blood can save Damon's life, but will only give it if Stefan agrees to be his loyal assistant. And so, Stefan pledges his loyalty to the villainous Klaus, and the duo leave Mystic Falls together. Damon is saved by Klaus's blood, and he shares a kiss with Elena. As the season comes to a close, the anti-vampire Sheriff Forbes tries to shoot Damon, but accidentally kills Jeremy instead. Bonnie takes her love to a group of old witches, who bring him back to life but warn of serious consequences. And those consequences begin to immediately manifest when Jeremy begins seeing the ghosts of his dead girlfriends Anna and Vicky. In Season 3 of The Vampire Diaries, Klaus and Stefan continue their hunt for vampires so that Klaus can create his army of hybrids. Unfortunately for Klaus, every attempt to create a new hybrid fails. All the while, Elena and Damon attempt to bring Stefan home and remove him from Klaus's control. Stefan kills many people working alongside Klaus, leading to Damon losing hope that his brother can ever be redeemed. On their mission, Klaus reveals to Stefan that they had actually become best friends in the 1920s, and Stefan fell in love with Klaus's half-sister and fellow original vampire, Rebecca. To protect his best friend and sister from his vampire-hating father, Klaus compelled Stefan to forgive get them, and then stabbed Rebecca with a magical dagger that incapacitates originals until it is removed. In the present, Klaus restores Stefan's memories and removes the dagger from Rebecca, allowing the trio to reunite to discover the truth behind Klaus's inability to create new hybrids. They return to Mystic Falls, where Klaus discovers that he needs the doppelganger's blood to create hybrids. And so, Klaus kills Tyler, forcing Elena to help him save Tyler's life by turning him into a hybrid, then supplying Klaus with more of her blood so that he can further expand his army. And now, because Tyler was turned into a hybrid by Klaus, Tyler is forced to be forever loyal to him. As Tyler and Caroline finally begin to date, Klaus also begins to develop romantic feelings for Caroline. To defeat Klaus, Catherine, Damon, and Jeremy, who can now communicate with the dead, find and release Klaus's eternally imprisoned father Michael, who despite being an original vampire, wants to see all vampires dead. Michael arrives in Mystic Falls with a white oak stake, the only weapon that can permanently kill an original vampire. Despite Michael's best efforts, Klaus manages to kill his father. Fortunately, Stefan is able to free himself from Klaus is compelling, and orders Klaus to stand down or else Stefan will turn Elena into a vampire, ruining Klaus's ability to use Elena's blood to create his hybrid army. Klaus complies with Stefan's demands, but Elena is left devastated by her former lover's actions. With Stefan no longer under Klaus's influence, Damon pledges to help his brother once again contain his bloodlust, and become the hero he once was. Through it all, Elena and Damon officially begin dating. In a further attempt to defeat Klaus, the residents of Mystic Falls release his entire imprisoned Michelson family, including Rebecca, Elijah, and the original's matriarch, Esther. With all of the originals now free, the vampire-hating Esther plots to bring her entire family together and kill them all. Meanwhile, members of the Founders' Council begin to be murdered by a mysterious killer. When Caroline's staunchly anti-vampire father is mortally wounded in the attacks, he refuses to allow himself to be turned into a a vampire to save his life. Caroline's mother, Sheriff Liz Forbes, finally accepts and reconciles with her vampire daughter. Alaric soon discovers that he is in fact the serial killer, as his Gilbert ring has infected him with an uncontrollable darkness. 
As Alaric tries to cure himself of the darkness, he begins dating a doctor named Meredith, who uses vampire blood to help cure her patients. As the originals continue to antagonize the town, Elena and her allies manage to kill one of the Michelson siblings, Finn. This leads the group to discovering that if an original dies, their entire sired bloodline also dies. This was all a part of Esther's master plan, where killing her family would lead to the deaths of every single vampire in existence. And due to Klaus being the vampire ancestor of Damon, Stefan, Tyler, and Caroline, they can no longer kill him without also sacrificing the themselves. To aid in her plot to kill all vampires, Esther manipulates the Dark Alaric to join her cause. She turns Alaric into an original vampire and magically links his life with Elena's, meaning if one of them dies, so does the other. Alaric manages to break through his dark possession long enough to kill Esther once and for all but the Dark Alaric still lives to complete her master plan. In order to save all vampires, Klaus wants to kill Elena in order for Alaric to die, while Damon and Stefan are willing to risk everything to keep their love Elena alive. Dark Alaric reveals the identities of all of the vampires in Mystic Falls to the town, then kills Klaus with a white oak stake, meaning all of his vampire descendants, including Damon, Stefan, Caroline, and Tyler, would soon die. Elena bids an emotional goodbye to Damon, but shockingly no one dies. Bonnie then reveals that she had secretly used magic to reincarnate Klaus into Tyler's body. As the season comes to a close, in an effort to defeat Dark Alaric, Elena sacrifices herself. Dark Alaric dies, and the original benevolent Alaric is able to say goodbye to Jeremy and move on peacefully to the afterlife. Damon and Stefan mourn the death of their lover, but are shocked to discover that Meredith had used vampire blood on Elena, resurrecting her as a vampire. In season 4 of The Vampire Diaries, Stefan tries to teach Elena how to be a vampire and only feed on animal blood. But Elena struggles to adapt to this new way of life and continues to crave human blood. Seeing Stefan's attempts as futile, Damon steps in to teach Elena how to be a vampire his way, leading to Elena once again developing feelings for him. Elena then discovers that the vampire blood used to save her life came from Damon, meaning she was sired to him. The pair are conflicted over whether Elena's feelings for Damon are real or simply the result of their sire bond. Meanwhile, Bonnie uses dark magic to return Klaus to his own body. Rebecca, furious at her brother for always choosing his hybrid army over his actual family, destroys Klaus's supply of Elena's blood. An angry Klaus disowns Rebecca, leading her on a journey of her own self-discovery. She begins to become a better person and eventually develops romantic feelings for Matt. Elsewhere in Mystic Falls, an occult professor named Shane begins training Bonnie in a dark magic called Expression. Shane secretly manipulates the new leader of the Founders Council to sacrifice himself and massacre the rest of the council. Then, as Tyler attempts to liberate Klaus's army of hybrids, Klaus kills them all in an act of petty revenge against Tyler. These two massacres are an effort to create an Expression Triangle, a dark magic ritual that would be powerful enough to lift the veil between the worlds of the living and the dead, resurrecting every supernatural being that had ever died. Following the massacres, the vampire hunter Connor arrives in town to investigate the deaths and kill the town's vampires. Klaus warns that Connor is a member of the Five, a group of supernatural vampire hunters whose crusade against vampires dates back centuries. When Elena kills Connor, she is given a curse that drives her mad. The only way for the curse to be lifted is for a new hunter to replenish the ranks of the Five. And so Jeremy chooses to lift the curse on his sister by turning himself into a supernatural vampire hunter. Jeremy develops a compulsion for killing vampires and discovers that the more vampires he kills, the more a magical tattoo reveals itself on his body, which would help lead to the cure for vampirism. Klaus and Stefan team up to find the cure as Klaus wants to use it on Elena, allowing him to once again use her doppelganger blood to create more hybrids. Stefan wants to use the cure for Elena and himself, allowing them to grow old together as humans. Stefan then begins turning criminals into vampires for Jeremy to kill and complete his tattoo. Once Jeremy's tattoo is complete, Shane reveals to the group that he knows the location of the cure, which is buried with a B 
being named Silas, a powerful witch and the world's first immortal being. Shane leads the group to an island to find Silas and the cure. Unfortunately, once the group reaches the island, they realize that the cure is only enough for one person. Catherine arrives on the island and helps Silas feed on Jeremy to resurrect the immortal witch. But Silas completely drains Jeremy and kills him. Catherine then steals the cure for herself as Elena and her friends mourn the death of Jeremy. Shane is left for dead by Stefan for his orchestrations of the various massacres. As the group return to Mystic Falls, the resurrected Silas begins posing as various people to manipulate the others into doing his bidding. Unaware that Shane is dead, Bonnie is tricked by Silas posing as the professor to massacre a group of witches, finally completing the expression triangle. Bonnie believes these deaths served a greater good, as they would lead to all supernatural beings, including the witches and her dead lover Jeremy, being resurrected from the other side. With the expression triangle now complete, Bonnie lifts the veil between the living and the dead, resurrecting every supernatural being, including Jeremy, Alaric, and Bonnie's grandmother Grams. Bonnie then turns on the villainous Silas and kills him by turning him to stone. Despite the many happy reunions, Grams warns Bonnie that she must close the veil and send everyone back to the afterlife, as that is what nature intends. Bonnie reluctantly agrees, but first casts a dark magic spell on Jeremy to make her lover's resurrection permanent. Despite the spell working on Jeremy, Bonnie is killed in the process. The resurrected villainous supernatural beings, including vampires and former members of the Five, descend on the citizens of Mystic Falls to enact their revenge. The ghost of Bonnie then says goodbye to Jeremy and closes the veil, sending every undead being back to the other side. With Mystic Falls saved, Elena professes her love for Damon and the two share a kiss. Klaus bids farewell to Caroline and wishes her luck in her burgeoning relationship with Tyler. Klaus, Elijah, and Rebecca then travel to New Orleans to rebuild their original's family together. As the season comes to a close, Elena graduates high school before being attacked by Catherine, who wants revenge for Elena having the life that Catherine always desired. To save herself, Elena forces Catherine to take the cure, turning her into a human. With Elena choosing to be with Damon, Stefan chooses to leave town and dispose of Silas's frozen body. Unfortunately, following Bonnie's death, Silas is unfrozen. The immortal being reveals himself to be a doppelganger of Stefan, then locks up the real Stefan and throws him to the bottom of the town's lake and leaves him to drown. In Season 5 of The Vampire Diaries, Damon and Elena race to rescue Stefan, only to realize that he has already escaped. Stefan has been captured by Tessa, a powerful witch that thousands of years ago fell in love with Silas. Silas had instead loved a human named Amara, Elena and Catherine's original doppelganger ancestor. Silas seduced Tessa in order for her to craft an immortality potion that Silas could use to live with Amara forever. Upon discovering Silas's betrayal, Tessa created the cure for vampirism, killed Amara, and sealed Silas in his tomb. Tessa then spent the next 200 years living in the other side, a place she created for all supernatural beings to go after they die. Tessa returned to the land of the living after Bonnie lifted the veil, and now wants to kill Silas once and for all, trapping him in the other side with her forever. Silas discovers that his long-lost love Amara has been secretly kept alive by Tessa and turned into an anchor, which holds the other side together. Silas wants to kill Amara, destroying the other side, and then sacrifice himself to be with her in the afterlife together. Damon, Jeremy, and Elena are then forced to team up with Tessa to bring Bonnie back to life and serve as the new anchor for the other side, before Silas can kill Amara and destroy it. With Bonnie serving as the anchor, Tessa would be able to kill Silas and damn him to an eternity in the other side with her, forever separated from Amara. Silas arrives to thwart their plan and engages in a fight with Stefan. Stefan stabs Silas, mortally wounding him. As Silas and Amara both prepare to die and enter the afterlife together, Tessa completes the ritual to bring Bonnie back to life and make her the new anchor, meaning the other side remains intact. Amara dies and enters the afterlife, while Silas dies and enters the other side. Tessa then voluntarily sends herself to the other side to spend eternity with her unrequited love. 
Meanwhile, Elena and Caroline begin attending Whitmore College. When Klaus briefly returns to Mystic Falls and sleeps with Caroline, a devastated Tyler ends their relationship for good. Elena and Caroline then discover that their biology professor Wes Maxfield is a part of a secret organization known as Augustine, which conducts secret experiments on vampires. Wes captures Damon and Elena to advance his research, which he reveals is the development of the Ripper virus, which could force vampires to feed on other vampires instead of humans. Damon and Elena escape Wes, and Damon is reunited with his best friend Enzo, a fellow Augustine vampire test subject that Damon was forced to leave for dead decades prior. Damon teams back up with Enzo to hunt down Augustine members and enact more revenge. During this mission, Damon is injected with the Ripper virus, turning him against all of his loved ones. When Wes refuses to give him the cure, Damon kills him. Meanwhile, a magical vampire named Nadia arrives in Mystic Falls and reveals that she is Catherine's long-lost daughter. Nadia is a traveler, a group of witches who seek immortality and have no regard for adhering to the laws of nature. This led to a curse being placed on them by the other witches, condemning travelers to never being able to gather together in their own bodies. Nadia explains to Catherine that she could regain her immortality by placing her spirit in another body like a traveler, and so Catherine travels into Elena's body and poses as her, with everyone thinking that the real Catherine has died. Catherine as Elena then rekindles her past romance with Stefan. When Elena's friends discover Catherine's scheme, Nadia intervenes to stop them from bringing back Elena. Tyler confronts Nadia and is forced to bite her to save his friends. As the vampire Nadia begins dying from the werewolf bite, Catherine chooses to come to her daughter's side to say goodbye. Nadia dies peacefully, and Stefan then stabs Catherine, killing her and bringing back Elena. As Catherine's spirit prepares to pass through Bonnie to the other side, she reveals that she injected herself with the Ripper virus, which would now infect Elena. Before Catherine can pass through Bonnie, she is instead dragged to hell. To help save Elena and Damon from the Ripper virus, Enzo meets with a group of travelers who have obtained a cure. Elena and Damon are cured in exchange for the doppelganger blood of Elena and Stefan. The travelers use the blood in a ritual to sacrifice themselves and pass through Bonnie to the other side. This many people passing through Bonnie at once pains and weakens her, temporarily lifting the veil to the other side and allowing the traveler's leader Marcos to escape to the land of the living. This causes the other side to begin collapsing into an oblivion that would not only kill Bonnie, but every being that resides in the other side. The spirits of the travelers begin possessing the bodies of the inhabitants of Mystic Falls, and under the leadership of Marcos, begin plotting to use doppelganger blood to permanently rid the town of all magic and supernatural beings, allowing the travelers to take Mystic Falls for themselves. As the travelers cast their spell, the supernatural residents flee town to retain their powers and formulate a plan to save Mystic Falls. Tyler becomes possessed by a traveler and murders Stefan, sending his spirit to the collapsing other side. As Tyler fights for control of his body, Marcos forces him across the spell's borders, removing his supernatural abilities, and then murders him. Bonnie has become weak and magicless, and turns to twin witches Liv and Luke for help in casting a resurrection spell that could save their friends from the other side. When Liv first refuses, Caroline murders Luke to force Liv into cooperating. Bonnie, despite knowing this would kill her, helps devise a plan to kill all of the travelers once again, weakening Bonnie's anchor and allowing all of their friends to escape the other side, just like Marcos had. As the group lure the travelers into the Mystic Falls grill to blow it up, the other side continues to crumble and begins pulling many of its inhabitants, including Silas, into oblivion. Damon and Elena sacrifice themselves to blow up the grill, sending themselves and all of the travelers to the other side. With Bonnie weakened, Damon and Elena help their deceased friends Stefan, Luke, Tyler, and Alaric to escape the crumbling other side. Seeing his sister would die if she continued the resurrection spell, Luke forces Liv to stop the spell just before Damon can successfully escape. As their friends and family mourn them, Bonnie and Damon are pulled into oblivion.
In Season 6 of The Vampire Diaries, the Traveler's spell is still active over Mystic Falls, meaning that none of the supernatural beings can enter without reverting to their pre-powered states. Outside of town, Elena, Caroline, Luke, Liv, and Tyler return to Whitmore College, where the resurrected Alaric is now a professor. Romance quickly blossoms at Whitmore, as Alaric begins dating a fellow professor named Joe, and Tyler begins dating Liv. As Elena searches for a way to bring Damon and Bonnie back from the destroyed other side, Caroline searches for a way to break the Traveler's spell on Mystic Falls. Meanwhile, Stefan has given up on both missions and now lives a new peaceful life in Savannah. Enzo is furious that Stefan has given up on rescuing Damon and vows to ruin Stefan's life for revenge. Elsewhere, Damon and Bonnie find themselves in a world resembling an abandoned Mystic Falls in 1994, cursed to repeat the same day over and over again. Bonnie, who has lost her magical powers, searches for a way to get them back so that she and Damon can return to the real world. Eventually, Damon and Bonnie find a fellow trapped being named Kai, who helps Bonnie regain her magic. Before the trio can escape together, Damon and Bonnie discover that Kai is a siphoner, a witch who can't generate his own magic but can absorb magic from others. Kai was a part of a family from the Gemini Coven of Witches, and is actually the twin brother of Joe. Gemini twins are magical beings that, after coming of age, are forced to perform a merge ritual, where the more powerful twin absorbs the other along with their powers, after which they are made the new leader of the Gemini Coven. Fearing Kai's power and unstable nature as a siphoner, his parents instead had many more children, including another set of twins, Luke and Liv, to one day complete the merge ritual and lead the coven instead. Furious for being passed over as leader, Kai attacked his family, slaughtering them all on this day in 1994, except for Joe, who managed to save the infant Luke and Liv. The Gemini coven fought back against Kai and created this prison world to confine him for eternity. Realizing that Kai is too dangerous to allow to escape, Bonnie sends Damon back to life and leaves herself behind to ensure Kai remains imprisoned. Meanwhile, Matt remains in Mystic Falls and discovers that a resident named Trip is hunting vampires and bringing them across the town's magical border, removing their vampirism so he can murder them. Trip captures Enzo and Damon, but just before bringing them across the border, Alaric arrives to save them. Alaric is forced over the border where he loses his vampire and begins to die as a human. Fortunately, Joe arrives and saves his life. Enzo then turns Trip into a vampire and forces him to enter Mystic Falls, killing him in an act of ironic revenge. Meanwhile, Kai finds a way to escape the prison world on his own, leaving Bonnie trapped and alone. The villainous siphoner absorbs the Traveler's magical barrier around Mystic Falls, allowing all of the supernatural beings to return home once again. As Kai captures his twin Joe, and forces her to begin the merging ritual with him, Luke intervenes to save his sister and complete the merge in her place. Kai absorbs Luke, killing him, but then begins to feel some of his younger brother's humanity, leading to him having remorse over his actions. Alaric then proposes to Joe, who discovers that she is pregnant with his twins. Meanwhile, Sheriff Forbes tragically dies of a brain tumor. As Caroline mourns her mother, Stefan comforts her, and the two fall in love. Sheriff Forbes' death inspires Matt to join the police force. And as Jeremy graduates high school, he decides to leave Mystic Falls and forge his own path, hunting villainous vampires across the country. Back in the prison world, Bonnie finally discovers a way to escape on her own. But on her journey, she encounters Damon and Stefan's mother, Lily. Lily Salvatore had been presumed dead, but had actually turned into a vampire a century ago before going on a murderous worldwide killing spree. To stop her rampage, the Gemini Coven trapped her in her own prison world of 1903. After Bonnie reveals Lily's location, Kai volunteers to take Damon, Elena, and Bonnie to the prison world to rescue Lily. Damon then reunites with his mother, who claims to have spent the last century in isolation reforming from her villainous ways. The group then betrays Kai, trapping him once again in the prison world as they take Lily and escape. Bonnie then gives Damon a cure for vampirism, which she had found on her quest to discover a way home. Damon tells Elena that he is willing to take the cure with her so that they can grow old together. Elena then takes the cure and becomes human once again, but before Damon can join her, all hell breaks loose. Joe warns the group that before being imprisoned by the Gemini Coven, Lily had aligned with a 
group of heretical witches who had siphoner powers like Kai, and Lily had turned them all into vampires. Those vampire siphoners had been trapped in the prison world with Lily, and now the Salvatore matriarch is working with Kai to bring them all back to Earth. Inzo, who had been originally turned into a vampire by Lily a century prior, remains loyal to her. At Alaric and Joe's wedding, Kai appears, having escaped the prison world once again and been turned into a vampire by Lily. He then murders Joe and attacks all of the guests, critically injuring many. In the chaos, Liv and Tyler are both mortally wounded. Not wanting them both to die, Liv forces her lover Tyler to kill her so that his werewolf gene activates once again and saves his life. Mourning his love, Tyler decides to leave Mystic Falls to forge a new path as a werewolf. Wanting revenge for being betrayed and trapped in the prison world, Kai then magically links Bonnie and Elena, cursing Elena into a coma as long as Bonnie lives. Despite everyone's fears that Damon will kill Bonnie to save his love, Damon instead murders Kai and saves Bonnie's life. Sadly, Elena will now be trapped in a coma until Bonnie dies, which everyone hopes will be of natural causes decades in the future after a long and happy life. Bonnie uses her magic to allow everyone to enter Elena's mind to say their goodbyes. For mortals like Bonnie, Matt, Tyler, and Jeremy, those goodbyes could be final. For the vampire Damon, he promises to be there for her whenever she finally wakes up. Elsewhere, with Enzo by her side, Lily Salvatore finally reunites with the vampire siphoner family she has created, known as the Heretics. In Season 7 of The Vampire Diaries, Lily's found family of vampire witches, known as the Heretics, begin killing humans in their attempt to take over Mystic Falls for themselves. The Heretic family includes Valerie, Oscar, Nora, Mary Louise, Beau, and Malcolm. The lovers Stefan and Caroline work alongside the newly deputized Matt to save the town, evacuating all of the humans from Mystic Falls and calling for a truce with Lily and the heretics. Unfortunately, the truce comes to a quick end when Damon and Bonnie murder the villainous Malcolm. Working alongside Lily and the heretics is Enzo, who has always harbored a love for Lily, though he is growing concerned by her villainous actions. Lily sends Oscar off in search of the Phoenix Stone, a magical object which contains the trapped soul of Lily's long-dead vampire lover, Julian. Fearing Julian's revival, Valerie murders Oscar to thwart his mission. Unfortunately, Lily and the other heretics manage to acquire the stone and Julian's corpse successfully placing his trapped soul back into his body. Back in 1903, the witch Valerie was a part of Lily's makeshift family and was sent to keep watch over Stefan. Instead, Valerie fell in love with Stefan and, unbeknownst to him, became pregnant with his baby. For choosing Stefan over Lily, Julian attacked Valerie and killed her baby. In her grief, Valerie chose to become a vampire, making her the first heretic hybrid. In the present, Valerie reveals her secret pregnancy and the death of their unborn child to Stefan, who vows to help her kill Julian. Lily then links her life to Julian, meaning that if Julian dies, so would she. Despite this, Damon is willing to sacrifice his evil mother to ensure Julian's death, revealing to her all of Julian's monstrous actions, including the killing of Stefan's unborn child. Finally realizing the depths of Julian's villainy, Lily turns on her lover and joins Valerie, Stefan, and Damon in the plot to kill Julian once and for all. Unfortunately, Julian still has the loyalty of the other heretics, allowing him to get the upper hand and tie up Valerie and Damon, forcing Lily to choose between saving her biological son or her adopted daughter. Lily chooses to save them both by sacrificing herself to kill the linked Julian. Unfortunately, the heretic Mary Louise, unaware of the true depths of Julian's villainy, reverses the linking spell, meaning Lily's sacrifice was for nothing. Stefan and and Valerie hunt down Julian and kill him once and for all, finally avenging the death of their unborn child. Elsewhere, the grieving Alaric is informed that before their death at his wedding, the Gemini Coven magically removed the unborn twins from the dying Joe and placed them inside Caroline. Caroline eventually gives birth to Alaric and Joe's twin daughters, Josie and Lizzie. As Alaric moves to Dallas to raise his daughters away from the supernatural threats in Mystic Falls, Caroline chooses to accompany him to help raise the
the babies she magically birthed. With both Julian and Lily dead, the surviving heretics are left to discover who they are without their villainous leaders, and slowly try to make amends with the residents of Mystic Falls. Unfortunately, a magical huntress named Raina Cruz arrives in town to kill them all. Nearly two centuries ago, Raina's father was a hunter from the Brotherhood of the Five, who trained the young Raina into becoming an expert huntress. When Julian attacked their town and killed her father, Raina sought out a group of shamans to give her increased strength, immortality, and the magical Phoenix Sword, which Raina used to kill Julian and trap him in the Phoenix Stone back in 1903. And now in the present, with Julian dead, Raina has arrived in Mystic Falls to kill his heretic family and all of the town's vampire inhabitants. Raina kills Bo and fights Damon, but before she can kill him, Stefan intervenes, resulting in him being stabbed by the Phoenix Sword, giving him the Hunter's Mark of Death. Damon and Bonnie search for a way to defeat Raina and save Stefan, and are eventually offered help from Enzo, who is now working for a group known as the Armory. The Armory is a group that specializes in obtaining and containing supernatural knowledge and artifacts, and was originally founded by Enzo's father centuries prior, but is now led by Enzo's cousin, Alex. As Valerie warns Damon that the Armory can't be trusted, the mysterious group finds and captures Nora and Mary Louise. To save Stefan from the Hunter's Mark, Damon finds Reyna and begins repeatedly killing her, but each time she is resurrected like a phoenix. Enzo reveals to Bonnie that with every resurrection, one of the shamans that empowered Reyna dies, and now only one shaman remains, meaning Reyna is on her final life. And if she dies permanently, so will all of those cursed with the Hunter's Mark. And so, Damon spares Reyna, allowing the armory to capture and contain her. Damon realizes that his actions always lead to those he loves most getting hurt, so he decides to desiccate himself and sleep for the the next several decades until Elena reawakens. Despite Stefan's heartbroken protests, Stefan then travels to Dallas to reunite with Caroline, but after seeing her and her seemingly happy new family with Alaric and the twins, decides to be with Valerie instead. Three years later, Reyna has escaped the armory and will stop at nothing to kill the marked Stefan. A reluctant Stefan wakes up Damon earlier than intended to seek his help. Damon quickly discovers that a lot has changed in his absence. Stefan and Valerie rekindled their romance and traveled the country together. Alaric and Bonnie both hate Damon for abandoning them without saying goodbye. Alaric is now engaged to Caroline and happily raising their twins away from the supernatural chaos. Bonnie is now in love with Enzo and has been taking Reyna's blood, secretly given to her by Enzo via his connection to the armory, to suppress her magic and stop the armory from finding her. The armory wants to capture Bonnie and force her to open a mysterious magically sealed door that only a Bennett witch can open. Meanwhile, Mary Louise and Nora have remained imprisoned by the armory, with Mary Louise subjected to experiments with Reyna's blood. They soon realize that the blood is deadly to witches. With her death imminent, Mary Louise and Nora decide to sacrifice themselves to destroy the Phoenix Stone, which releases all of the trapped vampire souls from inside it. When Bonnie discovers that Reyna's blood will soon kill her, all of her friends, including Dame Damon, Enzo, Stefan, Caroline, Matt, and Alaric make a deal with Reyna to kill all of the released souls, in exchange for Reyna transferring her final life to Bonnie. Unfortunately, there are too many souls to kill and too little time, and so Damon turns to Alex to make a deal with the Armory to finish off the remainder of the vampires, in exchange for Bonnie opening their mysterious vault. Bonnie opens the vault, but then betrays the Armory and seals them all inside. Reyna fulfills her promise and gives her final life to Bonnie, which also transfers over her curse to hate and hunt vampires. Damon and Enzo realize that the only way to lift Bonnie's curse is to kill the final shaman, but to do so they would need to reopen the armory. Alaric and Caroline use their infant twins to siphon the magical seal and open the armory. Enzo distracts his curse love Bonnie, and Damon enters the mysterious vault to kill the shaman, lifting Bonnie's curse. As everyone celebrates, 
traits, Valerie and Alaric both realize that Stefan and Caroline belong together, and give their blessings to the former lovers to rekindle their romance. Unfortunately, Damon is called away from the celebration by Elena's voice inside the vault. As Enzo races into the vault to stop his friend from following the voice, he and Damon are overpowered by a mysterious threat. In Season 8 of The Vampire Diary, several months have passed, and Damon and Enzo have gone on a killing spree while serving the villainous monster from the vault, the Siren Sybil, who must feed on humans to remain young and beautiful. Damon has turned off his humanity to cope with the atrocities he is forced to commit for Sybil, while Enzo begins leaving clues for his love, Bonnie, in the hopes that she can find a way to save him. Meanwhile, Alaric has become the new leader of the Armory, with the intention of bringing its purpose back to safely studying and collecting supernatural artifacts. He and Caroline hire a nanny named Celine to watch their daughters, Josie and Lizzie, but unfortunately, Celine is secretly Sybil's siren sister. Centuries ago, the young Celine and Sybil were abandoned by their villages on a deserted island, due to fear of their burgeoning psychic powers. Sybil tried to be good, but Celine began causing ships to crash onto the island so she could feed on the sailors, and forced Sybil into doing the same. The girls were then visited by Arcadius, the world's first psychic, who after being burned alive, created hell and became the literal devil. Arcadius offered the sirens eternal life and beauty if they served him, and so they've been doing his devilish bidding ever since. On orders from Arcadius, Sybil sends Damon on a mission to retrieve a church bell originally forged by Matt's ancestors centuries prior. As Damon finds and attacks Matt's long-lost father, Peter Maxwell, Matt steps in to thwart Damon. When Tyler returns to town to help convince Damon to turn his humanity back on, Damon instead turns fully evil and kills him. Celine then kidnaps Josie and Lizzie, offering to trade them to Arcadius as his new servants. In exchange, for Celine and Sybil's freedom. Before Arcadius can accept the offer, Stefan and Damon intervene, offering themselves to serve instead. In an act to both save Josie and Lizzie, and also atone for the many sins they've committed as vampires, Arcadius tells Stefan that he wants him to corrupt good people and bring him those souls to feed on, because they are the most potent. Stefan turns off his humanity and agrees to do all of Arcadius's worst bidding in exchange for he and Damon being released from their devilish contract in one year. Sybil then forces Damon to turn back on his humanity, forcing him to suffer from the guilt of all of his recent atrocities. And with no more use for the sirens, Arcadius kills both Sybil and Selene. In addition to hunting human souls, Arcadius also wants to bring literal hell to Earth, and to do so, a Maxwell descendant must ring their family bell 12 times. The humanityless Stefan captures Matt and forces him to begin ringing the bell, but on the 11th ring, Damon arrives to intervene, saving Matt and all of Mystic Falls from an eruption of Hellfire. Stefan wants Damon to turn his humanity back off and join him as a willing servant of Arcadius, and so he devises a plan to find Elena's comatose body and murder her, destroying Damon's only reason to remain good. Meanwhile, Enzo wants to extract the cure from Elena's blood so that he can become human and spend the rest of his life life with Bonnie. As Stefan attacks Elena, Enzo and Bonnie attempt to stop him. Stefan murders Enzo, but Bonnie manages to inject Stefan with the cure. Stefan becomes a human, with his humanity back intact, while a heartbroken Bonnie lets out a burst of magic so powerful, it creates a new world to store Enzo's soul. Despite the bell only being rung 11 times, the rift to hell is open long enough for the villainous Kai to slip through and return to Mystic Falls. As Kai attacks Josie and Lizzie, attempting to siphon their magic, Alaric and Caroline intervene, defeating Kai once again. Bonnie uses her newfound abilities to create a new prison world to trap Kai in permanently. While searching for a way to defeat Arcadius, the group discovers that only a bone dagger can kill a spirit from hell. Unfortunately, after retrieving the dagger, Arcadius manages to capture both the newly human Stefan and the comatose body of Elena, forcing Damon to choose which one to save. Damon refuses to let either his brother or his lover die, 
and instead chooses to sacrifice himself. As Arcadius attempts to collect Damon's soul for hell, Bonnie shows up to fight him long enough for Stefan to kill Arcadius with the bone dagger. Arcadius's death results in Damon's soul being restored to his body. With Arcadius dead and the town seemingly saved from hell, everyone happily celebrates at the wedding of Stefan and Caroline. Unfortunately, in Arcadius's absence, Catherine has become the ruler of hell and returns to Mystic Falls to finish what Arcadius started. Catherine has brought Vicky Donovan with her from hell and tasked the Maxwell descendant to begin ringing the bell. Matt tries in vain to convince his long dead sister to stop, but she refuses. Knowing the town would soon be destroyed by the arrival of hell on earth, Caroline is forced to bid Stefan an emotional goodbye and flee town with Alaric and their daughters. Bonnie discovers that she can harness the massive power of hellfire and direct it back into hell, which would permanently destroy it. Damon captures Catherine and prepares to sacrifice himself by dragging her back to hell so that she would be killed in its destruction. Stefan arrives to sacrifice himself in Damon's place. Place, insisting that he has spent centuries trying to turn his brother into a good man. And now that Damon has been fully redeemed, it's time for him to live the life he deserves. Damon resists his brother's pleas and uses his vampire powers to compel Stefan to leave. Instead, Stefan manages to inject Damon with his blood, which contains the cure to vampirism turning Damon into a human. As Vicky rings the bell for a twelfth time, Hellfire unleashes into Mystic Falls, which Bonnie redirects back into Hell itself. Damon is left helpless as Stefan sacrifices himself to kill Catherine in the destruction of Hell. Stefan then moves on peacefully to the afterlife, but not before visiting the mind of Elena to say one final goodbye. Bonnie, now more powerful than ever, is able to break the spell on Elena and finally wake her. Her. As everyone mourns Stefan, the lovers Damon and Elena are finally reunited, now both as humans. Bonnie departs her hometown to travel the world, the spirit of her lover Enzo always watching over her. The new sheriff of Mystic Falls, Matt Donovan, decides to run for mayor. Alaric and Caroline, inspired by their magical daughters, decide to open the Salvatore boarding school for the young and gifted to train up the next generation of supernatural heroes. Damon and Elena live a long and happy life together as humans, and after dying peacefully together in their old age, they move on to a happy afterlife, where Elena is greeted by her family and Damon and Stefan lovingly reunite. Mm -hmm.